So he's pouring another little bit of the uh, little bit of the, 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 the Bob Dylan whiskey here, the Heaven's Door. This is a bourbon. This is a Tennessee bourbon. So um, ah. I think it was on Monday of this week. We had an episode that had an action cam down here aimed at oh, yeah, the bottle. Yeah. Well, uh, I neglected to bring up the action cam. Did y'all like that? Let, it, let us know if you like that. We'll make the action cam. Part of the new thing. Part of the new thing. So we can just say cut to the bottle and you can see the details if you want to. So, hey, patron members have been receiving all of their uh, first round of cool shit. Oh. Yeah. And um, Rex is commenting on how our signatures look a little sloppy. <laughs> yes, that's my but I'm going to show you something, not to the camera, because it's personal information. That's my signature. But I was trying to tell Rex, no, that is my actual signature. Here are two government identifying documents. Uh, created multiple years apart. You ready to write down numbers? You ready? Look at the signatures on these two. Yeah, it's a hot mess. But they're f***ing identical. That's yeah, a hot mess. Hot mess. Identical. I'm telling you, as sloppy as my signature is. Okay, we're talking about. It has almost a zero variance. Daniel, let me be real honest with you. You don't care. This whiskey is much bigger than your. F signature. That's true. This is a big deal. This is a Bob Dylan whiskey. This is a Bob Dylan whiskey. We're talking also about... Also from the Pritchards, because... Pritchard, we... Pritchards, you see. Just... Pritchards. Pritchards, you magnificent bastards! Uh, okay, so... One of the cool things is, they were looking for a thing... And by the way, this is seven years in new American oak. This is Tennessee bourbon. We They don't announce who it is. 45, so we don't know who's making it. 45%. We just know it's Tennessee. So on the nose, that is bourbony. Bourbony on the nose. Yeah, it's just kind of classic. Getting a little bit more of a soft sweetness. Oh, no, there's a little drama in there. Mm -hmm. I was expecting it to be really over, uh, overly sweet. Ooh. Like, I, I feel like a lot of the Tennessee whiskey with the category of the Lincoln County process, right. it gets really sweet oh. and, and smooth. And almost get, this is, thin. I'm, I'm getting a lot of barrel in here. Yeah, but almost this has got spiky notes. Like a barrel bitter. It's got character. The, the Like the bitterness from the wood. And then the, uh, what is the sweetness? Because the sweet note is not dominant. It's just like a sugar note for me. It's like a sugar on top of the wood. Yeah, I get that. Mm -hmm. But brown sugar or like powdered sugar or oh brown sugar brown sugar and then there's it ramps up into a barrel bitter pretty quick and then I unfold it drifts down into a little bit of red apple. Ooh, it's really tasty. Yeah, it's not boring at all. It's actually pretty complex. Mm -hmm. uh, now I wouldn't say this is a mass market design. No. No, and as a matter of fact, there are big brands that came out and you know they're aiming for the most wide drinker right. mass. This is, you're going to need to wrap your head around it a little bit. Right. Now it's got some complexity and the, it's, uh, how do we say this? The background whiskeys where you just drink and it doesn't demand your attention. This demands your attention. Yeah, it steps up. It has some <laughs> aggressive elements. On the whole, it's not necessarily a, a whiskey that's trying to kick your ass. Yeah, no, it's, it's not picking a fight, but it does. It definitely wants to be heard. Mm. Now, you know what's cool about this bottle design? You know what this is all from? So, Bob Dylan has, and uh, because he needed a hobby, and because he's Bob Dylan. Because I'm so wealthy and famous yeah. and loved. Because he's Bob Dylan, he does golf. Everything I want to achieve. He welds. Oh, he welds. And he has a uh, black buffalo ironworks. And what he does is he welds found objects together into gates. Oh, that's cool. And the gates sell for like six figures. Because, yeah. Right? This is one of his actual gates. Yeah. That's cool. Every bottle. So these There's are a picture representation of one of his actual gates. These are silhouettes of the gates, the found objects that he's built. Isn't that together. cool? Yeah. Joey Ulvin. Hey Daniel, why does whiskey have to go have to age in oak casks? Why can't it be done in other types of wood? It's it's uh, only in the Americans that re uh, well no people have restrictions for requiring oak casks. Oak casks started that way because it turned out to be the best balance in wood. It has just enough porousness that allows air to breathe and the whiskey to breathe and interact with the wood, but not so porous that it leaks constantly. And you also get really good notes. Yeah, and so oak is really the middle ground for holding liquids. Now, there are countries using 
other kinds of wood, like Japan, for example. Right. Um, and often they're getting totally different flavor profiles. Uh, when it comes to American bourbon, it's got to be new American oak. Yeah. Right? Um, and scotch has got to be oak. And so they're... Now there are legislative requirements. We did an episode with the Cooper from Brown Foreman on our other channel. Mm -hmm. We'll link it up here. And one of the things he was saying is they experimented with red oak and it was horrible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm sure there's it, the French oak is another one. Yeah, That's, French. Yeah. American white oak is, is a European big one. European oak. Yeah. But yeah, people are experimenting all the time. But uh, the, the oak that is um, sustainable where it doesn't take for ever and ever and ever to grow it has all of the flavor notes you're looking for has mm -hmm. the density that you're looking for yeah white oak is just one that really checks most of mostly all the boxes so, there do you want to hear how I've been kind of trolling people for a while you yeah a troll yeah I've been trolling snobs oh okay so snobs aren't people. most people don't know this but periodically something will come up that has an obvious direction it can be pronounced <laughs> Or a direction things could go. Like most people don't understand that uh, the bride, the, the, the Brad, the demigod. Yeah. Uh, they don't understand his name is pr pronounced Leclerc. Yeah. <laughs> For example, Leclerc. <laughs> exactly. So when I stumble onto something and people are like, you can't pronounce that right. I'm like, did you not think I had Google? Yeah. Do you not think that I knew how to pronounce that? Do you not think that I just didn't give it? But the other thing is, every once in a while I'll stumble into something where people are ranting. People I actually respect and like are ranting about something. And when that happens, I almost go out of my way to do it on one of our next videos on purpose. <laughs> just, just to sort of f*** with people. And one of those is there's currently an internet rage around the word smooth to describe whiskey. Oh, yeah. And everyone's saying, you know, nothing marks you as an amateur faster than using the word smooth to describe a whiskey. <laughs> that just shows you have nothing to say and nothing to add and nothing of value and you don't know what you're doing. Which is fine, by the way. Yeah, you don't have to know what you're doing at all. But by the way, for the last two weeks, right. I've been trying to use smooth in almost every video. Right. That's, that's why. why. That's funny. <laughs> uh, the, thing, the thing that's... Uh, really interesting to me is the people who have landed at a place where they're incredibly experienced mm -hmm. uh, and they have lots of knowledge and then they'll turn a, they'll turn a corner and rage against anybody that's new it's like what's so wrong with you it's like when people move to austin they live here for three years that's about the mark three years right and then they're like and everybody's moving to austin why can't you just go back to where you're from and right. like where, well, where are you from they're like, oh, Indiana? You're like, <laughs> <laughs> So, no, it, it's just, I think it's easy for uh, people to forget that they were once new. And they didn't have all of the experience needed to be able to pull out notes beyond just, is it smooth or is it sharp or yeah. bitey? So that's where you start. So, yeah. yeah, that's funny. You know what? This, <laughs> this uh, not a lot of smoothness. But yeah. it's not really incredibly bitey. It's yeah. like mid-range bitey. Yeah, mid-range bitey. But smooth. But pretty smooth. Smooth, smooth, smooth. Super smooth, smooth, smooth. smooth, smooth. Maximum smooth. <laughs> All the smooth. <laughs> uh, Matt Lynn, is it worth gassing you or whiskey? I am a light drinker, but my collection keeps growing each week. Sorry. A gassing, and what he means by gassing is... Uh, See all this air in this bottle? Is it worth it to use one of those things that replaces the air with inert gas to keep evaporation from happening? So, uh, I wish I could remember who turned me on to this and that I stumbled across it in one of our communities. Oh, oh, communities. Um, we now have the Whiskey Tribe Facebook page, which mm -hmm. puts a link in the description. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the Whiskey Tribe, we launched a, a subreddit over the weekend. I just checked, yeah. we're over a thousand. There you go. Over the weekend. That'll work. Over a thousand subscribers, which is awesome. We also, uh, you know, pointed people to a, a Twitter, because we're tweeting now. And the Twitter is going to be more of an informational Twitter. Yeah, just updates and announcements and things that, you know, you, you need to yeah. know about. That's also over a thousand subscribers. Nice. Over the weekend. Lovely. Um, the thing that they turned me on to was, because we said before, if you're getting a lot of air in here, but you want to keep it, uh, then just put it in a smaller bottle. Somebody, there's actually glass marbles. Mm -hmm. They put glass marbles to fill in the space, to fill in the space here, to basically take up that air. Yeah. Which, of course, 
That could be interesting. Yeah, I don't think glass glass isn't going to flavor well, the whiskey. It's in glass. It's in glass. Glass yeah. marbles. Lift up the whiskey. Take out the air. Just don't get the marbles like from your kids' room. Because <laughs> who knows where they've been? Why is there Play-Doh in my whiskey? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gene Yeagley the third. Uh, how about a poor bastards week where you test decent bottle sh bottom shelf whiskeys like Clan McGregor? Yes, there's a there's a plan for this that may or may not involve Martin Vander. Vander. Yeah. Anyway, we'll get there. It's a <laughs> family name. No, it's not shake, it's <laughs> no, no, you keep messing, get up. You keep messing it up on me, Chad. Nice and deep and tight. Look, Martin. <laughs> it's like a turkey <laughs> gobbling. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Shell Vonder, but Okay, sure. <laughs> Alright, here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. <laughs> If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.